Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 34th Annual SEMA Awards. We are pleased to return this evening to our usual spot on the calendar in celebration of Canadian Multiculturalism Day. But before we meet tonight's winners to launch our festivities, please welcome and prepare to enjoy the Trinity Nightingales Choir. Tonight's co-hosts, Lucy Zilio and Rudy Blair. Hello, everyone, and good evening. Welcome to the 34th Annual Canadian Ethnic Media Association Awards. 34 years wow. in existence, and so much has happened to media and technology in 34 years. Rudy Blair, hello, Rudy. Hello, Lucy. From 680 News, what were you doing in 1978? Oh, my goodness. You know what? That was a good year. Let's face it. <laughs> We had a lot of vinyl going on. CDs, what was CDs? We had cassettes, we had great music, we had great hair, we had great clothes. It was a good time. What about yourself? We had six in our family. We had one telephone. It was hanging on the wall in the hallway, <laughs> and we had one television, and we all gathered around it at the same time watching Three's Company, Dukes of Hazard, and the obligatory All in the Family. I miss Archie Bunker. <laughs> Oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you're going to mention Archie, I got to mention the Jeffersons. Yeah, yeah. Got to mention Good Times. It was still rolling then. Dynamite! There you go. <laughs> and got to mention Sanford and Son. All right, all right. Yeah, we're going okay. classics. But you know what? A lot has happened in the decade since SEMA was founded. And just as the Canadian ethnic media has evolved, so has SEMA has kept up with the needs and changing technologies of journalism practitioners. And tonight we'll look at a selection of fine work in four media categories that best reflects Canada's ethno-cultural diversity, along with a lively lineup of talent. But first, to introduce tonight's festivities, we are pleased to present the president of the Canadian Ethnic Media Association, Dat Nguyen. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to the 34th Annual Canadian Ethnic Media Association's 2012 Awards Gala. I would like to thank you for joining us in celebrating excellence in ethnic media. 
I would like to congratulate the winners of this year's awards. We are proud of your achievements, and I would like to encourage all of you to participate in the next year's awards. We are always looking for submissions for Canada's most esteemed ethnic awards presentation. I would like to thank the judging panel headed by Professor Minel Matani of the University of Toronto, Bob Lewis, Chair of the Canadian Journalism Foundation, and Leslie DeFritis, Manager of the Canadian New Journalist for a Free Expression. They did a wonderful job. Thank you. An evening of inspiring stories and entertainment awaits. I hope you enjoy the festivities. Thank you and have a nice evening. Now it's time to introduce our first presenter for the evening, who will be handing out the SEMA Award for Excellence in an area of expertise, for me, the radio category. Our presenter, you will probably recognize him. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable Jason Kenney, Canada's Minister of Citizenship, Immigration and Multiculturalism. Thank you, good evening. It's a real pleasure to be here at SEMA's 34th anniversary awards ceremony on behalf of the Government of Canada and Prime Minister Stephen Harper. As we approach Canada Day and Multiculturalism Day, this is a wonderful opportunity for us to recognize excellence in ethnocultural media. The Canadian Ethnic Media Association has for more than three decades given a voice and shared best practices amongst uh, the d wide diversity of ethnocultural media outlets that have become increasingly plugged in to the new media technology and are becoming, as many have said, the new mainstream media. And I'd like uh, especially to acknowledge Omni and Rogers for their deep dedication to providing new and relevant uh, platforms to ethnic media outlets uh, here in Toronto and across Canada. Tonight it's my honor to recognize in particular uh, someone who has uh, been selected for excellence in radio journalism. Nido, uh, whose broadcast A Donor for Jennifer was an enlightening radio feature that crusaded and mobilized audiences using public education through journalism. Ni was born in South Vietnam where he began working as a journalist uh, at the ripe age of 16 and so one of the most experienced journalists probably in the field and he came to Canada in 1989 and like so many newcomers immediately started giving back as a volunteer for the Vietnamese Association of Toronto and then as an ESL instructor with the York Board of Education. He of course has gone on to become editor-in-chief of the Taoboy newspaper, uh, one of the largest and most important media outlets in Canada's large and dynamic Vietnamese community. So let's see a video about uh, Nido and his production, A Donor for Jennifer. Reach the Nido, editor in chief of Toy Bao newspaper, came to Canada from Vietnam in 1989. His first job here was volunteer coordinator at the Vietnamese Association of Toronto, but his actual first job in journalism was in 1967 as a proofreader. He later became a reporter for various Saigon newspapers while continuing his education at the University of Saigon. Prior to joining Toy Bao Media, Ni Do worked as an ESL instructor. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ni Do. Please don't worry, this is only half of what I wrote last night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Seema, for this award. Although I must admit that being primarily a print journalist, winning an award for radio work was quite unexpected to me. Another shock came yesterday 
when I was informed that I would be the first recipient to be called up here this evening. And you can see that I'm still shaking. <laughs> In all seriousness, though I'm extremely honored to accept this award, I have to confess that it is not the biggest award and reward that I have got from this story. The bigger reward was seeing the power of ethnic media at work. It was the reward of seeing hundreds of Vietnamese Canadians responding to the story and going to the DNA screening sessions of Toronto and Vancouver last year to try to save a young teacher. All that resulted in thousands of requested samples in the DNA registry of One Match Canada and the world, <coughs> and indirectly, a match for Jennifer. I'm quite certain that every journalist in this room would be proud when our story make an impact in our community. And I was humbled by this story because it has made an impact by helping save a life. We found that when we speak to the community, we are heard, trusted, and with the awareness of the community, we can make a difference. And that's what Thai Bao is about. And I'm proud to accept this award from Seema because that's what you are all about. As an ethnic media network, one of our job is to inform and connect the community to other communities and the mainstream. And that's why nice like tonight is important and special. It is our opportunity to connect and to reach out to each other just in case another person needs help. I'd like to thank judges, Seema Board, Dave Nguyen, our publisher, and especially Susie Nguyen, the program supervisor of Toy Bao Radio, who pulled out this audio from the shelf, dusted it, summarized it in English, and submitted it to the churches. Thank you so much. We move next to the SEMA Award for Work in Print Journalism. And I am so privileged to introduce our next presenter, a woman who for a long time now has been an ongoing inspiration. The first black Canadian woman to be elected into the House of Commons, former chair of the Ontario Bicentenary Commemorative Committee of the Abolition of the Slave Trade Act, and Ontario's first fairness commissioner, among other accolades. Also, she was a participant in the first ever media skills training course for ethno-cultural Canadians over 30 years ago. She's also a member of the Order of Canada, two credentials that she shares with SEMA Chair Madeline Ziniak. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to longtime SEMA supporter, Office of the Fairness Commissioner, and recent Diamond Jubilee Award recipient, the Honorable Miss Jean Augustine. <laughs> Merci beaucoup et bonjour. Minister Kenny and uh, Chair, Canadian Ethnic uh, Media Association, Mr. President, distinguished guests, it's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to be here this evening. I'm honored to be part of this milestone 34th annual Canadian Ethnic Media Association. It is a tremendous opportunity to celebrate. Congratulations uh, to all. For me, tonight is a great opportunity to meet new faces, to reconnect with many dear friends that I have met through the years. As uh, the Fairness Commissioner for the province of Ontario, I, my office oversees the licensing of 40 regulatory bodies for Ontario professions. And so my mandate to ensure that registration practices of transparent, objective, impartial, and fair connects nicely with your modus operandi. I hope everyone has an enjoyable time this evening and will leave tonight's ceremony with renewed vigor and vision to continue the great work of keeping Canadians of all backgrounds informed and engaged on all issues 
from neighborhood issues to major developments in respective ancestral homelands. Though we are presenting awards for excellence with Canadian, um, within Canadian ethnic media, let it be said that everyone here tonight is a winner. Whether your newspaper, internet site, radio, television station, media outlet is big or small, everyone plays an important role in the fulfillment of this great nation's spirit of multiculturalism. Today's world is super connected, and we know that Canada, and I say that Canada has always been connected through your network of ethnic media, ethnic media families spread throughout the country. And therefore, it is with pleasure that I ask that I'm here to introduce the recipient of this year's SEMA Award for Print. It goes to Gloria Suhasini. She's the associate editor with Canadian Immigrant Magazine, and her article and her work has brought her to the attention of the jury and those who have been, uh, who have selected her here tonight. So please turn your attention to the screen for a brief video that speaks to uh, the work of Gloria Suhasini. Gloria Suhasini, associate editor of Canadian Immigrant, was once described as, quote, a human book by the Toronto Public Library, no less. She holds a master's degree in journalism from an American university and has worked in print and online media in New York and in California's Silicon Valley. Since coming to Canada in 2005, Gloria has realized her passion to inform, educate and motivate by writing on topics that affect newcomers and recent immigrants. Let's welcome Gloria to the stage. It's my pleasure to present you Thank this, you. Gloria. Thank you. I'd like to begin by commending Seema for honoring journalists from the ethnocultural community whose work often goes unnoticed. And congratulations to our fellow uh, winners. Uh, it's indeed a privilege to receive this award. As a fairly recent immigrant to Canada, I'm grateful to have the opportunity to expose the issues faced by immigrants. As the federal government creates and implements immigration policies to better our economy, I strive to shed uh, light on the consequences these policy changes have on our society. Last year, the issue of family reunification caught my eye. Uh, the government had decided to reduce the number of permanent residency visas for parents and grandparents. Exploring the government intentions, I learned that part of the reason was to discourage older immigrants because they don't contribute <laughs> to the economy significantly. Uh, to get a handle on the reality, I interviewed many immigrants. I turned out, it turned out that uh, many of them were actually missing out, both economically and socially, by not having their elder relatives uh, live with them. As members of the ethnic media in a multicultural society, I believe it is our responsibility to bring such issues to the forefront. And in my case, Canadian Immigrant Magazine has given me the opportunity, the best one possible for me, uh, to fulfill my responsibility while pursuing my passion for journalism. I thank my editor, Margaret Jettelina, and the entire Canadian immigrant team for being great supporters of my, uh, my efforts. And thank you, Madeline and uh, Chris, for being here to support me today. Congratulations, Gloria, and Honorable Jean Augustine. Time for some entertainment. Okay, Sakura is the Japanese word for cherry blossoms, and Mai means a restrained ceremonial type of dance. Put them together, and you have the name of our next performers, the Sakura Mai Dance Group. 
Oh, you said that word well. Sakura Pretty good, Moi. eh? Yeah. <laughs> now, over while Sakura Moi is the group's name, the type of dance they perform is called Yasukoi. Got that one. A fusion style that combines traditional Japanese dance movements with modern music. So please put your hands together for Yosakoi Dance Group, Sakura Mai. Next on tonight's agenda is the 2012 SEMA Award for Work on the Internet. Presenting this award will be Dr. Ayman Al Yassini, Executive Director of the Canadian Race Relations Foundation, a post he has held since being appointed in 2006. Dr. Al Yassini holds a PhD in political science from McGill University with a specialization in international relations and the politics of developing areas. He has participated as keynote speaker in numerous national and international human rights conferences and is a frequent media commentator on race relation issues. He has an extensive list of credentials that spans more than 30 years. Plus, you may remember he presented the Internet Category Awards at last year's SEMA Awards. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Ayman Al Yassini. Merci, it's a uh, grand plaisir d'être parmi vous uh, ce soir. It's a pleasure, it's an honor to be here for the second year. It means that I've done a good job last year, so they invited me. And it's a pleasure to see Mr. Kenny attending this, uh, this evening's um, gala. Uh, the work of SEMA is, is quite important, is important for all of us as Canadians. At the Canadian Race Relations Foundation, uh, we work on the strengthening of Canadian identity and belonging. SEMA's work through its membership and thanks to the leadership of Madeline and Mr. President, Mr. Chair, and each one of you, we are working together to strengthen belonging to Canada and to strengthen the sense of association 
and uh, feeling that all of us are part of this uh, society. C'est un grand plaisir pour moi uh, ce soir de présenter le, uh, le, le, le prix uh, pour uh, l'Internet. We have the uh, recipient of this year's uh, award. It goes to Priti Yelaja. And uh, Priti is a senior uh, writer uh, at the CBC, uh, well accomplished, uh, highly talented, has uh, an impressive uh, list of credentials. But the award was given for her work on Multicultural Canada, a haven from Norway style uh, violence. So let us, let us watch the video. Although journalism marks career number two and degree number three for Priti Yelaja, writing has always been her passion. She has worked as a reporter for television and for print and has covered topics including business, politics, education, arts and health, all from a diversity perspective. Her current job as senior writer for cbcnews.ca has allowed her to fine tune her online writing and social media skills while she covers local, national and international news stories. At this point, I would like to invite uh, Priti to join us here. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. I'm so honored and humbled to get this award. Issues of diversity and multiculturalism have always fascinated me as a journalist. Whether I was writing a series about racism in Kitchener-Waterloo schools, a column about celebrating Christmas as non-Christians in Canada, or a story about cultures colliding in the first ever beauty contest for young Pakistani-Canadian women in Toronto. When our family came to this country as immigrants from India via the United States, multiculturalism was not yet official state policy. In those days, the emphasis was on assimilation. I still recall saying the Lord's Prayer and reading passages from the Bible every morning at the start of the school day. Students had the option of abstaining from this practice, but my parents believed it was educational for my brother and me to take part and learn about the dominant culture in which we were living. Today, the makeup of Canada has changed dramatically, particularly in urban areas. The idea of multiculturalism has also evolved. Despite being a touchstone of Canadian national identity and also a point of pride, it has in recent years faced a backlash from some quarters. This trend underscores the need to highlight these issues in the media as a way of sparking conversation and debate so that we are proactive and collaborative in seeking resolutions to conflicts when they arise. I'm absolutely thrilled to accept this award. I want to thank SEMA and the jury panel that selected me for it. I also want to thank Stan Popolkas from Omni Television, who nominated me for the award. Stan gave me my first uh, job on air as a reporter for South Asian Newsweek. I also want to thank my mother, Sujata, my brother, Adir, and my boyfriend, Raj, for all their love, support, and encouragement. Finally, I want to dedicate this award to my father, Shankar Elijah, who was a professor and a champion of diversity. Thank you all. Okay, Lucy, you got a chance to say that earlier. Now I'm going to get a chance. Uh, Boy, you look fantastic. I, let, let me put it to you this way. Gold is not my favorite color, okay? But of course, we still have other SEMA awards to present. And of course, uh, the presenter of the uh, SEMA Award for Radio is a much sought after speaker and consultant on the topic of representation of ethnic diversity in the media. An established author of numerous publications on mixed, relace, uh, mixed race identity, media and minority representation, critical journalism, and women of color in geography. 
Her professional titles include Associate Professor of Geography and Journalism at the University of Toronto, President of the Association of Canadian Studies, and Director of the Centre for Innovation in Diversity and Journalism. But most important, Manel is now a SEMA board member. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next presenter, Dr. Manel Matani. Evening. Complexity, context, and the inclusion of multiple voices. These qualities are necessary for accurate storytelling of ethnic communities. Our award winner in the category of television exemplifies excellence in all these categories. In our deliberations, we on the jury agreed that this particular documentary stood out because it provided a concrete example of how we can cover the undercovered and report on stories with depth and sincerity. Our award winner asks a very provocative question. Does mainstream media provide accurate and balanced coverage of Arabs and Muslims? And how do these images shape our perceptions of these minority groups? This is a hard-hitting, thoughtful, and informative documentary. It gives me great pleasure to announce that the award winner for television goes to Gabby Andreas, director for Guilty Until Proven Innocent. Please watch the screen to find out more about this outstanding director. Shortly after Gabby Andreas graduated with honors from film and television production at Humber College, he founded his own production and post-production facility, Andreas Media. Since then, he's been very active as both producer and editor. His projects include producing Omnia, a weekly program for the Arabic language community, multilingual public service announcements, and key credits on numerous independently produced documentaries, in addition to spearheading the one for which we honor him tonight. I'd like to invite Gabby up to receive his award. I have to share with you that uh, tomorrow is my birthday and this has been by far the best gift I've ever received. Thank you. Madam Chair of CMA Madlenziniak, Mr. President, Dat Nguyen, fellow members, co-hosts Lucy and Rudy, ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, bonsoir, mas al khair, good evening. I'm honored to be receiving this award tonight on behalf of everyone who worked very hard to make Guilty Until Proven Innocent a great documentary. A filmmaker's greatest reward is when his or her film touches someone's heart and the feedback we've been getting since the documentary started airing on Omni has been overwhelming. A great man, Martin Luther King Jr., once said, one who condones evil is just as guilty as the one who perpetrates it. I hope this documentary is a step in the right direction, at least for me. I would like to share this award with my team and recognize my partner on this project, Bruce Lipsy, producer and writer, with whom I worked tirelessly for many days and nights. My DOP award winner, Colin Allison. Narrator, Fadia Sharbin for her warm voice. Jose Luis Monzon for the amazing motion graphics. Annie Madmina for the beautiful and uh, original music. And everyone else from individuals to organizations. A big thank you goes to Omni for the 100% funding. Guilty until proven innocent wouldn't have been possible without Omni's independent producers fund. I would like to thank two people in specific, Madeleine Zinyak and Perito Schmeta, for their guidance and support throughout the project. And last but not least, I want to thank the person who has always supported and believed in me, my wife, Fadia. Thank you. I will uh, cherish this for the rest of my life. Thank you, and congratulations to uh, the winners in the uh, other uh, categories. Thank you.
Maya is a new generation of artists between the ages of 10 and 25 who count among their influences various Toronto-based dance and drum organizations, including Nagoma Drum and Dance Ensemble, Ballet Creole, and Koba, the collective of black artists. Now, they continue to create learning opportunities for children and youth while gaining the sport of multi-generational audience through their innovative performances. And the language of music, like the language of dance, is universal. Please welcome Beyond Sound Empire. Presentation of the SEMA Awards for Excellence in Ethnic Media behind us, we move now on to a very special presentation. Every year, the Sirhe Humara Ziniak Award is saved for last. And for good reason. Named for SEMA's founder, this award is presented to one outstanding individual who, through their work, has spoken for Canadian multicolor multiculturalism. But first, a short video to remind us of the unique legacy we salute tonight. Journalist, author, poet, editor, and publisher, Sergei Hamara Ziniak was a passionate advocate of multiculturalism. In 1949, after the Second World War, Ziniak came to Canada and continued his journalistic profession. He began publishing the country's first newspaper in the Belarusian language, the Belarusian Voice. And in 1952, he started the Mutual Cooperation League, representing 20 ethnic organizations. Central and Eastern Europe. It continued until 1962. 
Ziniak began the Canadian Ethnic Journalists and Writers Club in 1978 after the realization of the need to have an organization that was inclusive, not only of publishers, but broadcasters, writers, and reporters. He was the inaugural executive director with membership of over 200 publishers, writers, and editors from ethnic print, radio, and television. Ziniak believed ethnic journalists should promote the values of Canadian citizenship and report on Canadian affairs as well as on those in their homelands. Serhei Hamara Ziniak's initiative would prove to be a true ethnic and multicultural form. In 2006, the name changed to the Canadian Ethnic Media Association to be inclusive of the new emerging media. After years of successfully reflecting and championing the role of ethnic media, the ideals of Serhei Hamara Ziniak continue to guide the work of this organization into the future. Madeline Ziniak has received numerous community, government, and industry-related honours for her dedication throughout her career, including the Order of Ontario and the Order of Canada, for her contributions as the major driving force behind the development and growth of multilingual and multicultural media in Canada. But of course, she'd rather focus on the accomplishments of others this evening. To present the award named after her father, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Madeline Ziniak, Chair of the Canadian Ethnic Media Association and National Vice President of Omni Television. Good evening, everyone. Thanks, Lucy. Thanks, Rudy. Lots of energy there. Very good. <laughs> Minister, the Honourable Jean Augustine, distinguished guests, members of Parliament, and, and our colleagues. Every year, it is an honor to present the 2012 Sergei Khmara Zinik Award to an outstanding individual for lifetime achievement in the area of media and multiculturalism. It's always such a privilege to acknowledge sometimes the unsung heroes in our industry, and very important to acknowledge their effective work, especially of the award recipients this evening. This year marks the 20th anniversary of my father's passing, and more than ever, I am reminded of his passion for journalistic freedom of expression and his commitment to language rights in the reaffirmation of one's culture. As I was writing these remarks late last night, I received an email from a journalist from Belarus that wanted to bring to my attention an article that he had just published, this journalist, in defense of my father's writings on Belarusian politics and history that recently came under attack. These articles were written in Canada, as he was the editor and publisher and writer and journalist of the Belaruski Holos, the Belarusian Voice. And these articles from Canada were being used to teach a country, Belarus, under dictatorship about its own history, which was not available in the homeland. It is for, it's because of these experiences and reasons that I am delighted and proud to honor this year's award recipient of the Sergei Khmara Ziniak Award. Dr. Lillian Petrov, historian, commentator, documentary producer, has always sought to create a more harmonious Ontario by increasing public appreciation of the contributions made by first and second generation Canadians to this country's culture and economic vitality. She designed the Multicultural History Society's first curriculum contribution, Old World, New World, which sought to achieve a balance within multicultural studies between encouraging interest in family heritage and understanding through cross-cultural study what is common to all migration ethnocultural experiences. And I was delighted to see many of your board members here, Lillian, from the Multicultural History Society, supporting you this evening. I first met Lillian in the late 70s in that grand building at U of T, the building at U of T on Queen's Park Crescent, that was the nerve center of multicultural studies. The Multicultural History, History Society was where she shepherded great publications, such as Polyphony, that was one of the first to seriously examine the role of ethnic media in Canada. And then another first, the Encyclopedia of the Peoples of Canada, 
where she was also a contributor of the history of Macedonians in Canada. Working with trailblazing academia, such as the late Professor Robert Harney and Professor Robert Magocci, Lillian was part of a team that inspired, supported, and encouraged so many of us in the pursuit of responsible media portrayal of Canada's cultural diversity. So let's learn more about Dr. Lillian Petrov through this video. Over the last 30 years, Dr. Lillian Petrov has encouraged cross-cultural understanding and increased appreciation of the Canadian ethno-cultural experience through her work in the field of immigration history and ethnic studies. An award-winning historian, educator, and extensively published author, Dr. Petrov is currently Coordinator Emeritus Community Relations and Educational Programs at the Multicultural History Society of Ontario, where she develops interactive programs to reflect the positive aspects of our multi-ethnic society. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's 2012 Sergei Maraziniak Award, Dr. Lillian Petrov. Friends, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for helping to teach me the power of story. It seems the ultimate concern of virtually every human culture is to tell its children its story. I certainly learned that as a Canadian of Macedonian origin. But story is not only for the sake of children. You see the necessity and the hazard of using story to build bridges between communities, bridges of knowledge, bridges of understanding, and bridges of acceptance. Story is not only for the sake of the children, it is for all of us. SEMA has been at the forefront of those who have gone in search of story as a means to increase knowledge in ways which honor both the integrity of the story and the integrity of those who have lived the story. Story is dynamite. It has power. Story can destroy, restore, preserve, bless, bind, or divide. Story can be denied, disguised, silenced, erased, whispered, shouted, invented, elevated, elongated, abbreviated, degraded, or lifted up. Story can be used to heal or to harm, to support or to attack, to create division. Story teaches us, teaches others, comforts us, informs us, and identifies us. Story maps the future and illuminates the past. Is there room for the story of each individual? Is there room for the story of each cultural community? Is, the world, is there world enough and time? Is memory strong enough? Is language large enough? SEMA members have answered the question with a resounding yes. One may well ask whether there is air enough for all of us to breathe. Allowing the story of all to be heard requires deliberate intervention. You have intervened. You have made clear that the one whose story is known has an obligation to hear the words of the one uh, who has lived the story is the one to tell it. What is the outcome if the story is told, if each story, whether individual or group, is heard? You have taught me that it changes things. The process of eliciting story forbids assumptions, prevents easy categorization, requires time, necessitates listening to sound as well as to silence, 
demands attention and results in bringing us together. SEMA has made it abundantly clear that a country like Canada cannot refuse the story. Thank you so very much. the Sergei Hamara Ziniak Award, we come to the conclusion of this evening. Yeah, what an exciting night. A big thank you to everyone in the audience uh, on stage and backstage for contributing to a very successful night here at the 34th Gala Awards Night for SEMA. Mille grazie. Huh? <laughs> You're so funny. I try, yeah. you know. Yeah. To help us say goodbye for the evening, our closing performance will be our opening act, founded in 2011 by the rector of the Holy Trinity Russian Orthodox Church in Toronto. The Trinity Nightingales Choir was inspired by the parish school children's trip to Moscow. All choir members speak Russian fluently, and they are regular members of the Holy Trinity Parish, which means they go to church every week, <laughs> every one of them. Trinity Nightingales will again inspire us with song.